Life processes, all the processes like respiration, excretion, nutrition, growth, movement, reproduction, control and coordination and transport of materials. All these processes are known as life processes. They are the functions performed by living organisms to maintain or sustain their life. I have divided this chapter into four parts. So in this first video, we shall cover digestion and nutrition in animals. In the second video, we shall cover nutrition in plants. In the third video, we shall cover transportation in organisms. And in the fourth video, we shall cover respiration in organisms. So let's start. So nutrition in animals is also known as heterotrophic nutrition. Heterotrophic nutrition is of three types. First is saprotrophic nutrition, second is parasitic nutrition and the third is holozoic nutrition. First, saprotrophic nutrition. So these organisms break down the food material outside their body and then absorb it. For example, fungi like mushroom, bread mold and yeast. Second, parasitic nutrition. So these organisms derive nutrition from other plants and animals without killing them. For example, cascata, ticks, lice, leech and tapeworm. Third, holozoic nutrition. So these organisms take in whole material and break it down inside their body. And it includes various steps like ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. So now let us understand more about holozoic nutrition. So, holozoic nutrition is carried out by both unicellular organisms as well as multicellular organisms. So, let's see few examples of unicellular organisms ca uh, carrying out the holozoic nutrition. First, amoeba. So, amoeba ingests its food by finger-like projections called pseudopodium. Then, food is broken down into simpler substances inside the food vacuum. This digested food is absorbed directly into the cytoplasm. The remaining undigested food is moved out of the cell and thrown out. Second, paramecia. So it ingests its food from a specific spot called mouth. It uses cilia to move the food particle. Cilia are the hair-like projections on the body of paramecia. Then paramecia puts the food particle inside its mouth. And the multicellular organisms carrying out uh, holozoic nutrition include all the mammals and including humans. Now, let us understand more about nutrition in human beings. So, the human digestive system is divided into two parts. The first is alimentary canal. It is a long tube extending from the mouth to ants. It consists of mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and the ants. And also there are many associated glands with the alimentary canal that are salivary glands, liver and the pancreas. Now let's understand more about each part in detail. First, mouth. So in the mouth, the following organs and glands help in digestion. First, teeth. So they mechanically break down the ingested food into smaller pieces. Second, salivary glands. They secrete a fluid called saliva. Saliva contains salivary amylase that breaks down the starch into simple sugar. Third, tongue. Tongue is a muscular organ. It mixes saliva with food and it also helps in swallowing the food. Second, esophagus. So it has muscles that contract and relax rhythmically to push the food forward. These are known as peristaltic movements. Third, stomach. So stomach is a J-shaped organ. It has muscular walls which help in uh, mixing the food thoroughly with digestive juices. It also has glands which secrete hydrochloric acid, mucus and pepsin. So hydrochloric acid 
kills the microbes and creates an acidic medium in the stomach. Mucus protects the lining of the stomach, while the pepsin enzyme helps in protein digestion. So in the stomach, protein digestion is carried out by the enzyme pepsin. Fourth, small intestine. So it is the longest part of alimentary canal and it is very highly coiled. It is of different sizes in different organisms. Herbivores have a long small intestine. This is because they have to digest cellulose which is very hard to digest. On the other hand, carnivores have a sm sh small short intestine. This is because they have to di digest meat which is easier to digest. And the small intestine is the site of complete digestion of fats, carbohydrates and protein. So the complete digestion of all the substances takes place in the small intestine. So it receives secretions from the liver and pancreas. Now let us see how the liver and pancreas help in digestion. So the liver secretes bile juice. This breaks the fats into smaller globules and it makes the food more alkaline. Second, pancreas. So they secrete pancreatic juice and uh, this pancreatic juice contains trypsin enzyme and lipase enzyme. Trypsin enzyme helps in protein digestion while the lipase enzyme helps to break down the emulsified fats. So the bile juice plus pancreatic juice plus intestinal juice secreted by the intestinal walls breaks down the proteins into amino acids the carbohydrates into glucose and the fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Now, after the process of digestion is completed in the small intestine, absorption is carried out. Let's see how absorption is carried out in the small intestine. So, the inner lining of the small intestine has numerous villi. Villi have blood vessels that which take the absorbed food to various parts of the body. Fifth, large intestine. It absorbs water from the unabsorbed food. And the last part of the alimentary canal is anus. The undigested food is removed from the body via anus. And, and uh, this is regulated by anal sphincter. With this, we come to the end of human digestive system. In the next video, we shall discuss the process of nutrition in plants and photosynthesis. So stay tuned.